Welcome to today's webinar on leveraging new Oracle Database 19C security features with the Oracle eBusiness Suite. My name is Phil Ryman. I'm the Director of Business Development at Integrity, and I'll be the moderator for this e-learning session. The speaker today is Stephen Coast. Steve is the Chief Technology Officer and founder of Integrity Corporation. He's been working on the Oracle products since 1994, and for the past 17 years, Steve has focused on the security and auditing aspects of the Oracle Business Suite and the Oracle databases, and has written and presented on these topics at the various national and regional conferences, including OEUG and the regional, or national rather, collaborative conferences. And I'll turn it over to Steve. Thanks so much, Phil. So today's topic is looking at the Oracle Database 19C, which has been released in out a number of months, and now it's actually certified and available for the Oracle Business Suite. So we're going to talk about this from a security perspective. So Integrity specializes in eBusiness Suite security, and so we're going to really look at what you want to be doing with the Oracle Database 19C in conjunction with the Oracle Business Suite, but purely from a security perspective. So what new security features are available, what you need to be thinking about when you actually potentially do these upgrades in the next few months or the next year. Before we jump into the presentation, just a little background about Integrity. So Integrity is founded in 2001 by former ERP consultants working on large mission critical implementations of Oracle Business Suite. Back then, the apps password wasn't being changed from apps, things like that. We've come a long way from there. And in, Integrity specializes in securing eBusiness Suite. We secure the technology stack, the eBusiness Suite application itself, the database, and the application server. And we do that in a number of different ways. So we have a set of products. One is App Sentry, which is a security scanning and auditing tool for Oracle eBusiness Suite. So App Sentry validates the security of the eBusiness Suite. So it's actually going through and doing hundreds and hundreds of checks on all the different configuration options, things that would take you days and weeks to actually do by hand. App Sentry can do it in a matter of minutes and give you very well-defined recommendations and reports on how to secure OK Business Suite, checking default passwords, profile options, initialization parameters, those types of things. For those on the call who actually have deployed Oracle Business Suite to the internet, you're maybe running iSupplier, iRecruitment, iStore. App Defend is actually provides a proactive layer of defense for eBusiness Suite and PeopleSoft. So App Defend is actively protecting eBusiness Suite from things like SQL injection attacks, cross-site scripting, but it also, and most importantly, provides virtual patching. So if you aren't applying your critical patch updates on a very routine basis, pretty much quickly after they're released, App Defend will actually close that window for you. It provides that virtual patching for both external deployments and internal deployments, so no one can get into the Oracle Business Suite environment. So very important layer of protection. Uh, where this presentation comes from is a lot of our security services work. So we're actually actively doing security assessments on many clients. We're helping them solve their complex compliance challenges, if they've got like PCI data in Oracle Business Suite, they may have health data, you may have SOX auditors coming down on you on how to do this. One of our specialties is actually working with organizations to help them to solve these types of com compliance challenges. And we also do a lot of implementation work in terms of and security design around tools like Imperva, Guardian, Oracle Audit Vault, Database Vault, and how to really get your environment secure. And then finally, Integrity is backed up by a world-class research team. So Integrity is working actively, trying to find holes in Oracle Business Suite, writing white papers, writing <clears throat> blog posts on how to actually best secure Oracle Business Suite in your environment. We actually wrote for Oracle a secure configuration guide for the Oracle Business Suite. So we wrote that a number of years ago for Oracle. And again, our knowledge is probably four or five times on what we check, what we look for in the Oracle Business Suite. Uh, so enough about Integrity, that's kind of a very quick background so you understand where we're coming from and where this presentation is based off of. Kind of let's now jump into looking at Oracle 19C and how to actually implement it with Oracle Business Suite and what new security features you should be implementing and what's actually important in terms of the release from a security perspective. Uh, before we dive into greatly, let's kind of talk a little bit about eBusiness Suite and 19C. So there's some things that you need to be knowing uh, about how this database version interacts with the application, what's certified and what's supported. So Oracle's got a number of releases out that are for the database that are supported with Oracle eBusiness Suite. So this chart here describes 12.1, uh, 19.3, 19.4, 19.5, 19.6, 19.7, 19.8, 19.9, 19.10, 19.11, 19.12, 19.13, 19.14, 19.15, 19.16, 19.17, 19.18, 19.19, 19
19.5 in terms of the versions of the Oracle database that are supported for the Oracle Business Suite. So you can only run a certified version. And as you can see, not on this list are database versions like 12.2, 18, all of 18, C, 19.4. Oracle is specifically only picked off certain versions of the Oracle database to be certified with Oracle Business Suite. So again, you have to be moving to a certified version. And this is all pretty new. So as we see, 19 C came out in September of 2018, and it wasn't certified until April of 2019. Now that the 19 C was initially certified, the certification comes much quicker for later releases. So now 19 5 is certified, and that was done in October, in actually November of 2019, and the release of 19 5 was done in October 2019. So it's always very important that you run a certified version. Um, if you're on 11.204, we actually see no reason to upgrade to 12.1, that going to 19.5 is really the path you should be taking. And we'll kind of talk about that in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. Before I jump into the next topic, we can do a quick refresher on Oracle product support here because this starts to map into what you need to be thinking about when you're upgrading to 19C. Why is this an important upgrade? What's some of the benefits you get? So a very quick refresher is, again, there's three levels of support from Oracle on their different products, and this is applicable both to the database and the e-business suite. And so they have premier support, that's you're paying your maintenance dollars, you're getting security patches, and generally that's good for five years from release. Then they move into extended support. Again, you're still getting the security patches. Uh, three additional years are typically covered, sometimes more for terminal releases, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. One of the issues with extended support is often there is an annual fee, but usually that's waived for a number of eBusiness Suite products in a number of situations. And then finally, as soon as you move into sustaining support, and again, this is a security presentation, Sustaining support does not have security patches, does not have critical patch updates. So when we're talking about support of a database, Oracle will take your phone call for sustaining support, but they will not give you security patches. Um, there's a, some options to do that, but generally there's no security patches for sustaining support. So when we view a database, an e-business suite version moving into sustaining support, to us that's unsupported because you're not getting the critical security patches uh, in the environment. The reason that those terms matter is when we start talking about your different database versions for Oracle Business Suite, these come into play. So what version of eBusiness Suite I'm on and what database I'm running matter. I don't get security patches. And <clears throat> if I'm on any version except 11.204, I don't have security patches. Any previous version before 11.204, there are no more security patches. 11.204, the security patches will end in October 2020. So one of the purposes of this presentation is to start talking about the runway. The runway is ending pretty quickly for 11.204. And even if you've upgraded recently to 12.1, the runway is not much longer. So when we're talking about even 12.1, 12.102 security patches will be ending in July 21. So this is important. So again, we need to be thinking about an upgrade. These dates are a year out, a year plus out uh, for 12.1. <clears throat> but the planning should be happening now because database upgrades are not a minor task within an organization. Again, they require testing, they require downtime, those types of things. What's important about the 19C upgrade is that 19C is the terminal release for the versions 12C, 18C, and 19C. So this will actually be supported for a longer period of time through March 2026. So again, when you upgrade to 12.1, you got a little bit shorter runway, but 19C is actually a fairly long extended period of time. So we're talking a good six, seven years from now in terms of support. So from a business case perspective, upgrading makes sense because, again, you'll be supported, won't have to do another upgrade for a while, except for applying uh, quarterly patches and things like that. So when we start talking about database version support, we're looking at, a number of different versions that are out of support. This chart, we kind of get some gas from because when C-level people start seeing this <clears throat> chart, they're looking at, hey, we're still on 11.203. We haven't been able to upgrade and we haven't been getting security patches since July 2015. So that kind of matters because there's also often a misconnect in an organization that Oracle is saying, oh yeah, you're fully supported. You're under sustaining support. 
but you're not getting security patches. So when we talk about support from a security perspective, the critical patch updates are very important. When we start looking at these dates, these dates are running out, and in order to stay secure in the environment, security patches are a critical piece of that at the database level. If you're on 12.101, security patches ended in July 2016. So again, these <clears throat> dates matter uh, for applying security patches. And if we start looking at 19C, again, January 2026, that's actually far ways away, so you actually have a nice long avenue, so you do a major database upgrade, and then you're actually supported for a while. Again, you still have to apply the quarterly patches to stay at the latest versions, but it's a little bit easier then. So let's talk about 19C here for a second and kind of change back to, okay, what is 19C? Well, 19C is actually not as glamorous as it sounds. Oracle changed the naming scheme when they went to 18C They've switched from the standard versioning going from 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They actually switched to making the database versions map to years. So when we talk about 18C, Oracle's new method is 18C was the versions available in 2018. 19C is the ones in 2019. And we'll actually see 20C coming out next year. So Oracle has moved away from the standard naming convention of 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, to instead it'll be 18, 19, 20, uh, and mapping very directly to the years. Uh, one of the key points is that 19C is the terminal release, so when we actually start backing up and looking at this, 19C is really only 12, 203. And if you actually see some of the Oracle support notes, some of the background documentation, those pieces of documentation actually refer to 19C as 12, 203. So you'll actually see that in documentation. Uh, but again, this is very important that 19C is actually a long-term support release, so that's why you get that little bit longer window. That's why the support for extended support goes out to March 2026. Oracle has also changed the naming around some of the patches. So when we started to talk about patch set updates in 12C and prior, we were talking about a PSU. Now we're going to talk about a release update revision. There was bundle patches that were more proactive patches. Those are now going to be a release updates. So as part of this 18C release, Oracle has been changing some of the naming conventions uh, behind the scenes. So now let's talk about some of the security features that are available in 19C. And I'll also reference 12C here a lot because when we talk to our clients, many of them are still on 11204. So this will be sprinkled in a lot of 12C discussion as well as 19C. Um, a lot of the security features that came out in 12C have also been upgraded in 19C, in 18 and 19C. Um, so things <clears throat> are kind of moving very quickly on some of these security features. Uh, one of the key things with Oracle eBusiness Suite that it only certifies certain features of the database with the application. So certification means that it's support fully supported by the application and is actually potentially used by the application, that there's support notes around it, uh, things like that. So very critical security features in the Oracle database, like transparent data encryption, advanced security option, virtual private database, database vault, have specific su support certification requirements within Oracle. There's often a MetaLink note very specific to each product feature. Um, so today's release of 19C is fully supported with TDE, uh, virtual private database, multi-tenant, it is not supported today with database vault or data masking at this point. Those certifications are still pending. We anticipate those will be out in the next couple months. There are some security features that Oracle eBusiness Suite team does not support at all. They have no plans to certify things like data redaction. You can use data redaction. Oracle will say, that's fine. We'll let you use it, but we're not supporting it. So actually, if you run into a problem implementing data redaction, you have to turn it off and recreate the problem. So if you call Oracle and say, hey, we're trying to use data redaction, doesn't quite work with Oracle Business Suite, they'll say, sorry, we don't certify that. So kind of in terms of security features, there's different categories of security features. The ones you want to rely on most are the ones that are certified by the Oracle Business Suite technology team that you understand that they work well with the application, they've been well tested, Oracle tests, uh, version upgrades, and things like that. So let's kind of go back a little bit and talk about some of the 12.1 security features that were introduced for 
as part of the 12.1 Oracle database. This is Oracle 12.1 database, not Oracle Business Suite 12.1. But these were security features released as part of the Oracle database 12.1. And a lot of these features have now been upgraded and enhanced as we actually talk about 18C and 19C. One of the key changes was unified auditing was introduced as part of 12.1. We'll talk about that a lot because that's a major change in the way Oracle's auditing capabilities in the database work. Some of the incremental improvements that have been useful for eBusiness Suite customers are things like mandatory auditing. So again, unified auditing is turned on, but there's a number of things that are turned on automatically. You don't have to be turning on these audit switches for a number of things behind the scenes. Um, password hashing became better in the Oracle database as part of 12.1. It's FIPS certified, so organi governmental organizations rely on FIPS for encryption certification. So again, TD is now FIPS 140 certified. Uh, some minor issues like select any dictionary used to have access to user dollar. As part of 12.1, that was taken away. So some of these changes from a security perspective are positive, but from an organizational perspective, again, you may be relying on select any dictionary that may be granted to certain accounts that potentially may need access to user dollar. Those customizations and things may break if you do upgrade from 11.204 to like 19C because there's been very specific changes. Um, so these are just things to make you aware of. Uh, XPROC is a way that you run things at the operating system. Typically that only ran as the Oracle account. Now you can actually specify what Oracle users those processes run as, uh, very meaningful. Um, there's now the read privilege is actually available for tables and views. You used to be able to lock, <clears throat> if you just give someone a select privilege, they're actually allowed to lock uh, rows on a table. Now with the read privilege, you can read the data, but you can't actually lock that, those rows on the table. And so again, some customers run into these problems and some of these security features are actually uh, helpful for them. Things that are not supported but by Oracle Business Suite but are actually useful features are things like transparent data, or transparent sensitive data protection, say that fa fast three times. TSDP is actually a very useful feature because it now provides you a in-house repository within the Oracle database to say where sensitive data is in the database. And then a lot of the other tools within the Oracle database can use that data to actually automatically do things like transparent data encryption, unified auditing. Uh, real application security is the next generation of virtual private database now provides you better capabilities. You don't have to be using some of the very ugly <clears throat> commands that had to be used with VPD. You can actually do that a little bit easier. Multi-tenant was released in 12.1, but Oracle eBusiness Suite didn't support it. Again, data redaction we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, there's other minor updates in 12.1, things like the audit cleanup, um, predefined policies for unified auditing were released in different versions. So now if we kind of jump into when we talk about 19C, what are the security features if you have an Oracle Business Suite environment that may be on the Oracle database 12.1, what new security features have been released? If we're talking about doing an upgrade purely to 19C, what security features might there be? Because Oracle skipped a number of database versions, those other features all come into play. So this chart I've kind of broken down on 12.2 of the database, 18C of the database, and 19C of the database, because if you're doing an upgrade even from 12.1, these are all the new security features um, that you'll get as part of this upgrade process. Uh, as part of 12.2 of the database, there's a couple nice features. One is automatically locking inactive database accounts. So again, in the Oracle Business Suite application accounts, you can say, well, if someone hasn't logged into the account in 90 days, I need to try to lock those accounts. Those, that should also be done at the database accounts. So if you've got named users, ad hoc users connecting to the database, I should be locking those accounts automatically after a period of time. That feature is now finally available in 12.2. Um, the transparent sense of data protection was enhanced. Again, another, a number of these features have been were released in 12.1 of the database, now have been enhanced in subsequent versions, um, much very well in a couple cases, like TSDP now works across unified auditing, fine-grained auditing, uh, transparent data encryption. Um, there used to be a kind of a nitpicky issue that we often ran into if you had select any table system privilege, you actually had access to the unified auditing. That's been removed, so Oracle's been cleaning things up. 
As part of 18C, the one we're really excited about, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes in more detail, is now Active Directory integration is very easy to do. It used to be you have to go get Oracle Internet Directory, go through a lot of rigmarole, try to set it up. The integration is very easy, so we're recommending all our clients really move to integrating and using Active Directory for named database accounts. So your ad hoc users, your named DBA accounts should all be <clears throat> integrated with Active Directory. Um, Util Filder was always a security issue, always a risk. Again, Util Filder means there's a set of database uh, or a set of directories on the operating system that any database user could access. A significant security hole in the database actively used by most Oracle Business Suite customers. Again, you're writing interface files and things like that. Oh, by the way, the Apple SysPub account can go into the database and start using Util Filder directories and read all your interface data. Very problematic. Um, also, another nice feature of 18C is their schema-only accounts now. The Oracle database, unlike other databases like Microsoft SQL Server, other databases have schema accounts that you can't log into. They hold data and things like that. They hold packages, but you can never log into them. In Oracle, a schema and a database account always were equal. The user schema was always equal. So you could always log into those if you if the account was open, had a default password. Oracle's now locking those down. So a lot of those standard accounts like CTX Sys, MD Sys, OLAP Sys, now are becoming schema only accounts in 19C. So therefore it's more security. Those default accounts with default passwords hopefully don't exist anymore. Um, things like link dollar and scheduler dollar credential tables, those have passwords. So when you create a database link to another database and you hard code the user account and password in it, those credentials were stored in the database. They weren't truly encrypted before. Now you can encrypt those. The first release of unified auditing didn't write out to syslog. Because, therefore, it was a little bit harder to send that data upstream to a centralized logging solution like Splunk. Now, unified auditing does support syslog. It was supported in native auditing, but it was not supported by unified auditing. Now it is. That's uh, an incremental improvement in unified auditing, in our opinion. Privilege analysis as part of 19C is now included in the Enterprise Edition. That used to be an option that was included with Database Vault, but now it's actually included. Again, Oracle's taking some of these tools and actually moving them out of the options that are fairly pricey into the standard database. Um, some of the default accounts are now scheme-only accounts. Again, another benefit that we're trying to lock down the database more and more, um, especially for things like defaults. Change those default settings. There's no reason that the CTX Sys account should be ever logged into. Let's lock that down. Oracle's now doing that more by default. Manually lock the account. Uh, you can also audit top-level statements. One of the issues always for a lot of activity was if someone executes a high-level statement, they ex have a hundred different statements that are executed in packages and underneath that statement, you got all that audit. Now you can actually see that somebody just did something at a very high level. You don't really care about the details. You really care about what's happening at the highest level. So that's kind of a brief overview of security features. Let's talk about a little bit about the upgrade process to Oracle 19C, and then we'll talk about some of the security features in uh, detail in a second. So I compiled here all the different references for the Oracle eBusiness Suite and 19C. So you can actually see all the MetaLink notes here that are applicable. And we kind of went through MetaLink and kind of looked at all the key references, all the key documents that were, really had to be upgraded for 19C. So these are either new, new support notes or ones that were significantly changed in relationship to 19C. So things like cloning do change in some pieces here, how you do rack with the multi-tenant changes. So these are kind of some key documents. I've, I'm not going to go through all these in detail, but these are the kind of the key MetaLink notes. Um, you'll get an email with a reference to this presentation after, so we're just kind of documenting those out for you. So let's talk about the upgrade process. So if you're going from an earlier version up to 19C, so what do you need to be looking at? So again, I've referenced the support notes there. So th those are of the eBusiness Suite. So 12.1 and 12.2 of the eBusiness Suite. The <clears throat> documentation is separate for each of those to go to 19C. 
one of the key aspects of actually doing the 19C upgrade is that you have to go to 19.3, then you can actually upgrade to 19.5. You can't do a direct upgrade to 19.5, just the way the installer works and things like that. So then based off of those two MetaLink nodes, kind of if we go through it and we, what we did was we went through those MetaLink notes and said, okay, from a securities perspective, what should the steps matter? Which ones should you be actually thinking about and changing on how Oracle is actually doing it? So a number, a couple of them are actually either conditional or optional and things like that. So one of the steps early on is case sensitive passwords within, or within the Oracle database. Historically for years and years and years, Oracle required you to have case insensitive passwords for Oracle Business Suite. With the release of 12C, that changed. Oracle started saying, yes, we're gonna definitely support this much more than we have in the past and allow you to do it. However, they're still kind of hedging like, oh, that's optional. You don't need case sensitive passwords. From a security perspective, we view case sensitive passwords are very mandatory just to secure because there's a significant issue around brute forcing of database passwords. If someone has access to user dollar, they can download the password hashes and go offline and brute force them very easily. If they're case insensitive, you can do that very quickly. There's not a lot of permutations, but adding in case sensitive passwords raises that bar much higher. So therefore this, this step that's optional, we view step three as mandatory. Um, we'll talk about util file there a little bit more in detail in a few minutes, but again, Oracle is saying, yes, you have to move away from util file there because it's de-supported for the Oracle database in 19C. It's not even there. If you actually do a select star on V$ parameter, you don't even see your till file drawer anymore. So you have to migrate to Oracle directory objects. We're actually suggesting that you attempt to remove all the directory objects and move them, or all the file directories that are non-EBS standard ones, like the temp directory, and that's really the only one that needs to be in there, and move those, your custom code, to, to Oracle directory objects versus trying to use the way Oracle's doing it. It's secure, but we don't feel that comfortable with the way Oracle is doing it. They're, they're kind of making a kludge in a little bit in the way the parameter names work. We think you should be doing that as a custom way. Step three, the third step here is MGD sys has had some problems over the years. Um, it's a conditional step. You should be checking for it. We've actually found a couple upgrades that people have done for our clients that they actually missed the step in the MGD sys. Uh, wasn't properly removed and rebuilt. Um, there were some issues, especially if you've got a much older database because there is not very good versioning within the Oracle database. We've actually found some old artifacts within the MGD sys, sys schema that should have been removed, but by dropping it and recreating it as part of the instructions, you actually fix that problem. And then finally, the last one, which is very, very important. When you actually ever upgrade an Oracle database, you install 19.3 from scratch. You then run through the upgrade process and so you're taking a database that was maybe 11.204, um, 12i, or 12c. You may have applied the latest security patches on those, but when you do that upgrade to 19.3, you will overwrite the security patches that were applied previously and you'll only get the security patches that were part of 19.3 which were from April of 2019. Again, it's fairly recent date, but you will not get by default October 2019's critical patch updates within that install in any way possible. So therefore, after you ever apply a database upgrade, you always need to apply the latest and greatest uh, Oracle critical patch update patches. So these would be the RU patches now in the 19C terminology. And then we actually recommend you just go to 19.5 anyways, because then you're guaranteed to get those security patches because those were released as part of the October 2019 release in general. So again, whenever you do a database upgrade, always apply the latest security patches to that version because the version that you just installed has the security patches from when that was released. So in this case, if you just do a pure upgrade to 19.3 and stop, you have April 2019 critical patch updates. You do not have October 2019. So it's very important that you do that. And we see that step missed all the time in our security assessments. Very, very frequently done. 
So another huge change as part of the update to 19C is that Oracle is forcing you to go to a multi-tenant. And we'll kind of give you a quick overview of multi-tenant here because I know a lot of pure Oracle business suite DBAs have never worked with multi-tenant because it hasn't been supported before. Um, so as part of the upgrade to 19C, multi-tenant was released as part of 12C but was not supported as part of the business suite but now it's supported as part of 19C. And so the very quick background of multi-tenant is, multi-tenant is allowing you to run multiple databases within a single database. And so the terminology here is a container database. Think of that as a super database or the root database. And so you install 19C once, and that becomes your container database. And then you can just create these pluggable data databases within that container one of the key advantages of pluggable databases is it actually can pop them between container databases very easily. Um, you can support 252. And so what Oracle has been doing is they released the multi-tenant container database as part of 12C. As part of 19C, it is a deprecated feature. So non-CDBs really shouldn't be created in a 19C database, and this and support to create a non-container database is actually removed in 20C. So previously in 12C, you could just upgrade a 11.204 database to 12.102, and it would just look the same. You would never know, and you would never enable multi-tenant. Now in 19C, you really have to be using multi-tenant in 20C. You're absolutely forced to do it. So what's the issue with multi-tenant from a security perspective? The problem is that now you're actually creating another layer of security. So you've got the database server, I install the container database, and so that's really my root database, the container. And I've got common users there, so I've got common roles, I've got initialization parameters set at the container. But for each pluggable database, now I also have users. So now I actually doubled my security administration because I've got users in two places and now if I create 252 pluggable databases, I have 253 places that I might actually have users set up. And the interaction, there's lots of different pieces of interaction between the pluggable database and the container database in terms of the pluggable database can't do anything to the container, but the container users potentially can see the pluggable databases. And so now just it's adding another layer of complexity. Complexity and security don't mix. It's like oil and water. The more complex a system is, the more potential security issues crop into it. So we give dedicated multi-tenant presentations. We're actually gonna be doing one in February that's dedicated to Oracle Business Suite and multi-tenant to really walk through these issues. How does this work uh, within an Oracle Business Suite environment? What do you have to watch out for? Because again, when we talk about the pluggable database, the apps user in this case would be in PDB1. That's where your apps user would sit, but now I've got some generic accounts at the container that can also get into that pluggable database. So it just, it adds complexity. You really just have to understand it. It's not super complicated, but it's just something that you have to really be aware of and understand. So how does this impact Oracle Business Suite? So that's kind of the background. So I've got container database with pluggable databases in it. EBS, when you upgrade to 19C, you must run, the only supported configuration is to run multi-tenant. However, you can only run it in a single tenant model. So all the benefits really now of multi-tenant are out the window because I can't run multi-tenants. I can't run, I can't consolidate databases onto one Exadata and have multiple pluggable databases running in a giant container. That's not allowed or supported today with Oracle Business Suite in the future, it will be. Um, the next question always pops up, Ooh, how about licensing? Because I know multi-tenant is an additional license. As part of the 18C and 19C licensing, Oracle has actually changed the licensing that multi-tenant allows you to create three pluggable databases in Enterprise Edition without having a multi-tenant license. So there is no additional licensing cost with this, especially with the eBusiness Suite. I'm only allowed to have one pluggable database anyways. Um, some of the advantages of multi-tenant is, well, at least I only apply database patches to the container. They're automatically, as long as the pluggable database is open, they're automatically picked up by the pluggable database. I don't have to be applying patches over and over and over um, to all these pluggable databases. 
there's some things that are not supported with pluggable databases in Oracle Business Suite. One is relocating and cloning the pluggable database directly. So I can't just take my eBusiness Suite pluggable database and pop it from one container to another container. Today, that's not supported. Uh, we anticipate that th these types of features will be supported in future releases, but today they aren't. Um, so again, here's the MetaLink note that gives you pretty detailed information about how this all works. So the other issue that's significant with the upgrade to 19C is Util Filder is no longer supported in 19C. It's actually been removed. This is a good day for, for in my opinion, for, for a security perspective on Oracle Business Suite. Util Filder was problematic. It was horrible. It should have gone away a long time ago. And thank God it's dead, in our opinion. Because the problem with Util Filder was it was wide open. So any database account could read and write any file that was set up in one of the Util Filder directories. That's problematic. So again, if you could connect as the Apple Sys pub account, you could see all those directories set up in Util Filder. Oracle's got a fairly extensive way that you have to now transition this. Um, 19C added a, actually a pretty nice feature that allowed it directory objects to also re reference out to a physical directory. So it used to be in order to get away from Util Filder, you had to go through all your custom code and actually change those to directory objects. 19.3 has added that Util Filder, if it sees a physical directory name, will look for a corresponding directory object that maps to that physical directory and use that. Um, so or Oracle's provided you a little bit of a transition path. We strongly recommend you move directly to directory objects because, again, this mapping isn't clear. It's not as concise as it should be um, because the advantage of directory objects versus util folder is if you create a directory object, I can grant specific privileges to that. So by default, when Oracle does this conversion for you and helps you through it, again, um, automated conversion in Oracle's mind is 20 different steps. When you go through that process specified in this MetaLink note, it's very clearly outlined on how to do it, but they grant everything to the apps user only. So if you have any custom code, you actually have to go through a fairly rigorous process to look for how are these directories used? Where is the specific code? Is it running as apps? Is it running as another user? So you have to do all that analysis yourself to figure out where these objects are. As you're doing that, we strongly recommend you open up that code and change all those hard-coded paths to directory objects because therefore, if you change an underlying directory, you don't have to change your code. Um, so it becomes much more beneficial to ch do this now than having to do it over time um, because again, you're op you have to crack the code open to figure out how it all works anyways. You might as well be doing all the conversions. So that's Util Filder. Again, this is probably the most significant change as part of, of doing an upgrade from 11.204 or even 12.1 to 19C. This is actually a challenge. Multi-tenant's kind of, it's there, it happens, you just have to understand it. Util Filder is the only point on the upgrade path that actually things are going to break. You actually have to spend a lot of time and effort to do it. But again, the security benefit is significant here. Um, you eliminate a very big potential risk point within the database. So that's kind of the background. So now let's kind of jump into some of the new security features. What are the ones that we really are going to highlight here that we're going to look at and say, these are great. These are things that really give you a benefit when you upgrade to 19C. What are the features here that really improve the security of the database, make your life easier from a number of perspectives? The one that we're highlighting that as the, this one we love. This is the one we're going to just yell from the rooftops and say, this is long time coming. This is going to help so many organizations. So Oracle used to, has always been able to integrate with Active Directory, but in order to do that integration with Active Directory, you actually had to install Oracle Internet Directory Server. This became a nightmare. It just it was hard to manage. It didn't work well. Um, you had another server, you had another software product you had to buy. It took time and effort. And some organizations did it well. We always strongly recommended organizations do that. But this was a commitment. This was not just one you just pop up for one one or two databases. Oracle Business Suite is most many organizations' biggest Oracle database, very critical Oracle database. And a lot of organizations, we're just not going to implement Oracle Internet Directory and spend all that time and effort for one server. 
some organizations who have two or 300 databases that wanted to do this with, yes, they did it, they did a nice job, but you tend to not do this for one or two databases. What changed in 18C is now Oracle has moved away from enterprise user security to what's called centrally managed users, which is a direct integration between each database and Active Directory. Um, there are some caveats to this. It does require Windows Server 2008, so hopefully you're on that version, which I'm assuming most people should be. Um, and this is a much more of a direct elimination, direct connection. And the awesome security benefit of this was typically most organizations, their Oracle database accounts are decentralized. Each database, you manage the accounts one by one. And this isn't intended for application and service accounts. This is intended for all those named users that you have a hard time managing. So a lot of times organizations use an apps read-only account. So you're kind of skirting around this, well, I don't have to manage all those accounts. I don't have to create all those accounts. Now what I can do is manage this all in Active Directory. I can create a Oracle Business Suite read-only HR role in Active Directory, assign that out to different users, and now they're authenticated into Oracle Business Suite. If that account is deactivated in Active Directory, they lose their access to Oracle Business Suite. So it, you don't have to have this notification to the DBAs and things like that. Um, this is awesome. It's also, you don't even have to do it within the pluggable databases. You configure this in the container database and it's actually used by the pluggable database. So this is a very leap forward for trying to fix this problem of all these decentralized accounts. One of the things that we always do in our security assessments is when we looked at those named accounts, we always start asking for okay, what's the HR termination list and how many of these accounts haven't been logged in in five years and those consultants, those employees are no longer with the organization. That's a clear um, SOX violation. There's a lot of issues around that. This helps to solve that. And again, this is intended for those named accounts. So we really believe DBA should have named accounts. For the kind of the, that daily, I'm just looking at Oracle Business Suite, I don't need to go in there to actually make changes because again, most of the changes you make in the Oracle Business Suite environment, I have to use the system account, I have to use the apps account. But for just a daily basis, and I'm just going in pulling some queries and things from the Business Suite, I really should not be going in as the apps account. I should have a named DBA account that may not even have DBA, it just has select any table, select any dictionary, privileges like that. I should also, for all those ad hoc users, I should never have an apps read-only account. I should always have a named account. This makes that management so much more easier. Again, if I terminate that account. And there's a number of ways you can actually set this up. So I can actually do a one-to-one -one mapping. I can actually have the Active Directory account mapped to a named account. I can also do shared schemas. So I can actually have a shared schema account. So I don't actually have to set up each user that that role that group of users maps into one account that they all use. And so there's a number of different ways you can set this up. It's somewhat flexible, but it's very powerful. I get away from that decentralization. I get this all into Active Directory and my management's done in Active Directory. So that's the first key feature that we really like. Another one is, again, we're talking a lot about authentication authorization. Who has access to what? Who can connect to the database? A lot of our security assessments show that is a significant challenge, risk, and weakness in many Oracle Business Suite environments because people have way too many privileges. There's way too many accounts in there. There's way too many people connecting with highly privileged accounts. How do you eliminate that? How do you get away from that? Um, and then also when you're doing customizations and you have third-party applications, there's so many third-party applications that say, oh, for our application to work, we, you need DBA. You need the DBA role for our application, even though it only reads three or four tables, but we know it works if we give it to DBA. And then the DBA, then the DBA is like, well, I don't want that application connecting with that privileges in our Oracle Business Suite environment. I want to somehow limit that, but it's very difficult to do that in an Oracle database to figure out exactly what privileges are being used. So as part of 12C, Oracle added in a new feature called privilege analysis, and this was included as part of the database vault. And so prior to 19C, in order to use privilege analysis, I had to use data, I, it was, I had to license database vault. Well, what privilege analysis does is actually, is, it's similar to auditing, think of it as auditing, but its sole purpose is to say, okay, Bob went into the database and he selected on this table, he used this system privilege and he used that role. Well, he's got DBA role. Based on his 
usage of the last six months, he doesn't need DBA role. He just needs two system privileges, maybe access to five tables, and maybe access to a role. He doesn't need full DBA privileges, so I now can actually track and get a report to say, okay, Bob went into the database, this is what he used. Jane went into the database, this is what she used. Now I can actually take these accounts and try to limit them. I can actually do a fairly robust analysis by just turning this on, pointing it to a few accounts, and actually gives me a very nice report of what's being used over time. So now I can start looking at these database accounts for ad hoc users that are highly privileged, way too many privileges. I can work on least privileges. I can look at those interface accounts where the developers, oh, we have no idea what that account needs. Just give it every privilege in the world. I can limit that. I can take those third-party applications and start revoking DBA and actually assigning it out. And this works fairly well. It's actually a fairly nice analysis and gives you the information. And the nice feature now is as part of 19C, it's included with Enterprise Edition, and Enterprise Edition is the edition included with Oracle Business Suite. So now you can use this for free when you do the upgrade to 19C. Another feature that we really like as part of 19C is real application security. Um, one of the things with virtual private databases, it was hard to manage, it was difficult. However, we love it. We love virtual private database. It provides you some very key features, especially around custom accounts, how they can connect, what data they can access. I could do a lot of this with Database Vault, but again, that's a very expensive add-on. So how can I actually do this in an effective way, but not kill myself, right? And the problem with virtual private database, um, fine-grained access controls, were they were difficult to use. Real application security provides a little bit more capabilities. It makes it much easier to use. Um, if you've got any Apex applications that you're running within Oracle Business Suite environment, this actually, we love to use real application security with Apex applications. It works really well. And the other nice thing about a feature like real application security is it really works well with like unified auditing. Oracle has done a much better job recently of integrating a lot of these disparate tools, especially from the security side, so they all work together. So my real application security roles and events are actually audited within unified audit. Unified audit also pulls in like database vault events, things like that. One disadvantage is some of these features are not used by Oracle Business Suite. So some of these newer features, Oracle Business Suite just hasn't picked up because, again, they would have to write two, two sets of code to say, well, if they're running an older version of the database, this works. But if it's a newer version, this works. Um, so these features aren't necessarily used by Oracle Business Suite, but it doesn't mean you can't use them for your custom code for very specific point purposes. Um, one of the things that we often see is you've got these ad hoc users connecting, it's really easy to do select any table, right? But I don't want them to see um, salary information. I don't want them to see uh, different tables like PRL, people F, and be able to look at all the social security numbers. Things like real application security and virtual private database, you can do that very easily. You can create roles that then allow access or don't allow access to certain objects within the database very well. And so again, real application security now is another, ver another generation of virtual private database that works really well. So strongly recommend if you run into those challenges, real application security is a good way to solve it. So another couple, I'll go through a couple pinpoint ones here. Um, there's a new read privilege as part of 12C, which allows you to actually give out capabilities without actually having select privilege. And so this kind of lets you not give some privileges because we occasionally run into cases where the DBAs complain because users are doing stupid things and they have select privilege, but they're allowed to lock ro rows, which then causes problems, <clears throat> deadlocks in the database and things like that. So again, I can now give out, instead of select any <clears throat> uh, select privilege, I can now start giving out a read privilege, which actually is a little bit finer granularity that doesn't allow people to lock things, et cetera. Uh, again, I've talked about this in the previous slides, but again, transparent sense of data protection. The way you can think about TSDP is think about it as a mini repository sitting in the Oracle database that you set up and you say where sensitive data is in the application. And so I, I can actually define within TSDP and say, okay, the PRL, PRL, PERL, people F table has those security numbers under the national identifier. 
IBY security segments, has credit card numbers. I can define those out, and I can also take, especially my custom code, and define out where those items might be. And then tools like Oracle Redaction, Virtual Private Database, Unified Auditing, Fine Grain Access Controls, Fine Grain Auditing, Transparent Data Encryption, all can use that information as it's a repository, so I'm not having to always set up this. I don't always have to hard code everything and say, well, it's this table and this table and this table. I can now start leveraging the TSDP repository and say, okay, these are our policies. I don't want certain people to access this, and then I can use those policies in some of the security tools. So instead of just saying, okay, well, here all people have has to be encrypted in TDE. It also has to be set up in unified auditing. It has to be set up in virtual private database. I also want to do some data redaction policies. Previously, you would actually have, all those would be completely independent and nothing to do with each other. Now with TSDP, they can all now start using this centralized repository uh, for some of the configuration setup. Um, so it works really well. So now let's kind of shift focus to auditing. So the next set of slides are going to really focus in on auditing around the database. So as part of 12C, Oracle really completely redid the way auditing works in the Oracle database. In 12.1 of the database, it didn't work. So massive amount of problems, performance issues, limitations, etc. So we do not recommend you use unified auditing in 12.1 of the database. Now as we start moving to 19C, the feature has finally evolved, it's finally stabilized, performance issues are gone, bugs are gone, they've added enough features over 12.2, 18C, 19C that actually unified auditing is a very useful, very capable, centralizes the, all the auditing. So some of the other things that they've done is as part of this unified auditing rewrite, they've made a lot of mandatory auditing events. So a lot of things that happen from that auditing configuration, the base configuration of the database, around some of the key security events, especially around the auditing itself, are now always on, are always audited. So one of the things that you had to set up in previous versions of the database was the initialization parameter audit sys operations. <coughs> For 19C, that is automatically turned on. All the audits around auditing the audit trail are automatically turned on. Um, some of the changes to database vaults are automatically turned on. Usage of <clears throat> some of the key parameters around auditing, like enabling fine-grained audits or doing audit management, that is all automatically audited. Um, so it's kind of a, a change that now this information is actually set up for. You don't have to go turn on all these audits specifically. Again, there's many audits you want to turn on, and there's a whole – Integrity has a whole framework to do this, but at least a lot of the core ones are turned on that, you, that are kind of meaningful for just the database activities in general. Um, some of the other pieces of data that we always missed, we always wanted, was like, you've got a whole bunch of users in the database, I don't know when they logged on unless I turn auditing on. Oracle over time has been adding in some key features. So now the DBA users table has a last logon column. Very useful. It also has a common column. It also has an Oracle standard database account column. So they're adding in some a little bit more information to the metadata of the database. So you can say, okay, there's that one ad hoc user account. When was the last time they logged into the database? I don't even know if they're an employee anymore. You can say, yeah, that five years ago was the last time they logged in. It becomes very useful information. So these are, again, some of the benefits of doing the upgrades to 19C. Is some of the, there's pinpoint items, and there's just things that make your life a lot easier. For us, looking at last logon is very meaningful from a security perspective. Are these accounts old? Are they stale? When was the last time they logged in? So kind of the final topic here is unified auditing. I'm not going to go into great detail. We've given presentations, very detailed presentations on unified auditing, but a lot of people just aren't familiar with it, especially if you're on 11.204, that this feature was released in 12C. Unified auditing, the key advantage is that there used to be separate audit trails. So Database Vault had a separate audit trail. Fine Grain Auditing had a separate audit trail getting stored in FGA log dollar. Aud the standard audit trail went into odd dollar. The key advantage of unified auditing is that all that audit trail goes into co a common table now. It's all in one place. And Oracle's been doing a better job, even with 18C and 19C, is even putting more in there. 
Um, so there's unified auditing pure mode, or if you're on 12C, you can actually do a traditional auditing also. You can turn things on, uh, on and off. There's mixed mode. Um, the advantage is if you go to 19C, you can turn on unified auditing pure mode. Um, so you get a lot of advantages there. Um, there's some new database roles, so you can actually audit different usage of different roles. Um, becomes very powerful. And the key advantage is at the end of the day is you've got the audit, unified auditing super view. So again, you've got unified audit trail, which has unfortunately 94 different columns in it, but it's taking all this data. So you've got database vault, you've got RMN, you've got SQL loader direct load, you've got label security, real application security. Everything is going into a centralized location. So you only have to look at one location. There's views on this to see different uh, ways to look at the data, but the key is it's all in one place. Um, you don't have three or four different tables you have to look at um, to get this information. So that's just a high level overview of some of the 19C features. And again, in the future, we're gonna be doing separate webinars on taking some of these features, like how to use real application security with Oracle Business Suite, unified auditing, what's the security ramifications around multi-tenant? Uh, and I'll turn it back over to Phil to see if we have any questions. You might be on hold, Phil, or you might be on mute. You're absolutely right. I was on mute. You're absolutely right. I was on mute. <laughs> All right, we have quite a few questions today, actually. The first one, well, Unified Audit work with the e-business suite. Uh, yes, Unified Audit definitely works with the Oracle Business Suite. Um, we strongly recommend doing that. Uh, next one. Do you recommend to lock down the Oracle Schema accounts? Uh, absolutely. So as part of 12.2, that you could actually use AF Pass WD to lock Schema accounts. We absolutely recommend that because, again, those accounts have default passwords unless you're very careful about changing them. If you do different upgrades, you'll actually add in new schema accounts without knowing them because Oracle documentation doesn't say that they're there. So whenever you can, definitely lock those. You do have to unlock them when you do a patching, uh, but we think that's a minor inconvenience for the security benefits of doing it. Next one. Uh, should you implement United Audit? Unified audit, rather, in pure mode or mixed mode? Yeah, so we're especially talking about 19C, unified audit should be implemented in pure mode. So you should definitely migrate to that because, again, really mixed mode was a way that you could kind of have the, use unified auditing but also use traditional auditing. But as, if you do an upgrade to 19C, you really should just move to unified auditing, um, transition to that transition any reports or things that you had that were pulling off the audit trail and move it over to the unified audit trail. Next question. When you upgrade uh, 19C, do you stage the nine, stage 19.3, then run the 19.5 patches before the upgrade? Uh, no, the recommendation is to actually do the 19.3 upgrade and then you apply the patches uh, after the upgrade. Next question. I can't, tell you the reason Go ahead. I can't tell you the reason behind that, but that's that's the Oracle recommendation. If you look through the Oracle, Oracle documentation, that's how they have you do in the order. So we always strongly recommend to follow their process. Got it. Next question. Have you worked with the Oracle 12C data reduction with the eBusiness Suite? Da data redaction. Um, Yes, so data redaction definitely works with Oracle Business Suite. Oracle doesn't certify it, but they actually say, yes, go ahead and use it if you want to. And for personalizations and certain things, it's actually highly useful. We've actually had some use cases where we've solved some difficult challenges clients were having and could implement data redaction to do that. The only difference is, only problem is that Oracle doesn't support it or certify it. So if you run into a problem, Oftentimes you have to turn it off, prove that the problem exists without data redaction, and then open a case with or a support with Oracle. Because if you open a support ticket with Oracle, they'll say, sorry, that's data redaction, we don't support that. Um, but generally we don't run into those type of problems 
Um, it's if you do run into a form problem or an issue like that, yes, you have to turn off data redaction in the testing environment. Go test and make sure it's just the form, and not in something that's in, been incorporated due to data redaction. Next question: Is Direct AD integration only a database feature, or is this applicable with EBS Access? Actually, a very good question. So the Active Directory integration that I've been talking about is really a purely a database feature. This is only for database accounts. This has nothing to do with Oracle Business Suite. So this is a feature at the database that can be used on any Oracle database, and we recommend you do it for all your Oracle databases. But it's only a database feature for database accounts. This has nothing to do with the Oracle Business Suite application accounts. That if you wanted the Active Directory integration there, you would still have to use Oracle Internet Directory, Oracle Access Manager, and things like that. Unfortunately, yes. We wish Oracle Business Suite integrated directly with Active Directory 2, but it doesn't. And the feature that got released as part of 19C is only a database feature. All right, last question here. What new security features, if any, can be implemented that do not require additional Oracle security products or licenses as budgets are tight in the addition of projects, products like Oracle Access Manager Suite or Oracle Identi Identity Manager are not an option. Yeah, so some of the key features. So as part of the database, you have the Active Directory integration. You have real application security. You have the transparent sense of data protection, unified auditing. Um, those are all key features. The privilege analysis today um, are all part of the Enterprise Edition. Um, the features that would require additional fees would be like transparent data encryption, uh, data redaction, which is part of advanced security option, along with transparent data encryption, database vaults, all would be additional features. Um, but generally, most of the features I talked about are all included with eBusiness Suite Enterprise Edition. All right. I think that about wraps it up for the day. I want to thank everybody for spending the afternoon with us. Uh, be sure to turn in, tune in to uh, next uh, December 12th, which will be our next webinar on uh, sensitive data and uh, where it may be hidden within, hiding within your own uh, environment. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great rest of the week. Take care.